I'm a full-time artist. I've painted upwards of 600 different paintings. Here's one back here of my cat, Karma. I've also shown my work all across the Midwest at art fairs, and I've even had my own art gallery for several years. So I've had lots of experience setting up my art studio, figuring out different ways to make things work. And one of the main things here is that I haven't always made a good living as an artist. Actually, through most of my career, I really had to bootstrap things and, and work on on a very, very small budget. Because ever since I was 25, I'm 42 now, but I've always worked for myself. I've never like had a job where I worked for someone else. So I always have to find really creative ways to stretch my money that I earn. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you six tips that are gonna help you set up your art studio on the cheap. The first tip is if you don't have an easel, no problem, use nails. Earlier this summer, I was painting a really large painting, much bigger than what I've painted before. And my current easel at the time did not really accommodate it very well. I had to try to figure out some way to do this without purchasing a different easel because I wanted to make sure that I would be painting more big paintings in the future and that I really liked working that large. And so what I did was I put nails on the wall and I put different rows of nails so that way I could lift the painting up and down so that I could work on different areas of the painting at different heights, very much the same as an easel. And it worked really well. There were some drawbacks, but it did save a lot of money. I mean, this easel back here is the new one that I recently purchased for $2,000. This one has a crank that allows you to move it up and down on its own. Because one of the things that I found that I really needed was help lifting the canvas up. I have tendonitis in my both sides of my upper extremities because of a connective tissue disorder. And so uh, unfortunately, like for me, it's hard to lift canvases up and down, like especially big ones all the time as you're working, you know, on the wall. And so working with the nails, although it was a savings, it didn't really work for me long term, knowing that I'm going to be using bigger canvases in the future. So I just went ahead and sprung for the best easel that you can pretty much buy. But of course, everybody can't afford that. And I couldn't afford that until just recently. <laughs> so using nails is a great option. Over the years, I found that I don't read books anymore. I read them on my Kindle or I listen to audiobooks. You can see I have this old bookshelf back here. I've repurposed it to hold all of my acrylic paint and organize it really well. And it was free. I already had it. Another thing that I love to do is repurpose old chipped coffee mugs. I mean, check these out. They hold my brushes and you can see they keep them all upright. So when they dry, they don't smash into each other. And there's another way that you can hold your brushes and it is holding them upside down in an official brush holder. But that costs money. This is free. Also back there in my art storage area, you can see I have a hook where I hang my large brushes and large palette knives. Hooks are very cheap and are available at all the hardware stores, even Walmart. But it's a great way to utilize your space and keep everything organized. Next is really my favorite of all of these tips. It is my folding table. Check this out. It is a bar height table, so it comes all the way up to here. They're available on Amazon. I've put a link in the description if you want one of these. But why I love this so much is that you can arrange all of your items on there. So then you can stand here and paint. But then when you're finished, if you have cats like I do, they love to jump up here. I don't want my cat getting up here and dried paint. And I also don't want this in my way. So it folds up and you can store it. Next tip is for the lighting. Now, there's all sorts of really expensive things that you can do in your studio for the lighting, but in my opinion, you don't need to do any of that. I'm still using the original lighting setup that I started with, which was something that I did for really cheap from Walmart. All right, first off, get daylight bulbs. This way your colors will look right when you're painting, because if you paint with the yellow kind of more soft white bulbs, it's going to change the way the colors look when they're appearing to you in that light versus if you're seeing them outdoors in daylight. And for me, I show a lot of my work outside at Art Bear, so I want it to look the way it should look in daylight. But also, it tends to make your painting look better and the colors look better when you're making prints of them, just all, all the way around, if you paint it with daylight bulbs in your studio. I also use floor lamps. These are really cheap. I mean, <laughs> you can get them for like 20 bucks, sometimes on sale for $10 at discount stores. I place one of these on each side of my easel so you can see the other one around here. And I try to put them at about 45 degree angles so that way they're giving even lighting on the piece, but they're not quite exactly 45. You don't have to make it perfect, but if you can kind of spread them out on each side of the easel a little bit, it allows you to get better lighting. I also have daylight bulbs in the ceiling fan lights above me up there. If you'd like to learn about my favorite way to make a painting palette, and it's also really cheap and easy, watch this video. See you next time.
Also, if you're an acrylic painter like me, then you might need to know how to make your own painting palette. If you're interested in that, check out this video. All right, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.